Welcome to Marriage Heart to Heart. We're Tom and Elaine Waters with Restoration International. And we want you to experience a marriage that's truly heart to heart. Heart to heart with our Heavenly Father and heart to heart with the one you love. So we hope that you brought paper and pencil so that you can take notes. And if you didn't, we encourage you to get that so that you can remember more what you've learned from today's program. Today we're going to be talking about learning to become one. Now that wasn't necessarily as easy as we thought it was going to be, was it, honey? No, I thought it would just happen spontaneously. So we're going to be sharing with you very openly and honestly how it began for us. It began wonderfully, but things started to happen shortly after our honeymoon. Yeah, I'd like to take us back to our courtship, and we encourage all of you that are viewing today to also think about your courtship and your wedding day as we share with you from our experience. But our courtship was so special. I can remember any time we had a few minutes, we looked for ways to communicate with each other. You know, when you were on break from your responsibilities in the hospital and I would be in my apartment, I would anticipate your break time and anticipate that phone call because I knew that we'd love to have every moment together, even if it was only by phone. Oh, yes. We never ran out of things to talk about, did we? No. All through our courtship and engagement, we just wanted to have more time. We weren't getting enough time with each other and we never ran out of anything to talk about. And it seemed to me like we really didn't run into any conflict. Had a great time. So let's talk about our wedding day. You know, that day that we looked forward to was such an exhilarating adventure. But I have to tell the people that that day, when I was standing up there waiting for you to come through those doors, and go back with me as we talk about this. I don't know how it was for you men, but you think about what it was like on that wedding day. I was standing there in my tuxedo, and I remember... As you were back there, and we, had, we were in a pretty big church, and you were behind those doors, and I knew my bride was going to come through those doors. And that was exciting. But I remember thinking, my heart is pounding so hard. <laughs> I wonder if these people can see it. So I very discreetly looked down at my tux jacket to see if it was flopping up and down, but it wasn't. But I was anxious, and I was excited. This was going to be my new life with my new bride. Now, were you pretty nervous too? I didn't feel nervous at all. I was just so excited, and I was waiting for those doors to open. I could hardly wait to go down the aisle and stand by your side and make that commitment for life that I wanted to be your wife. And I, the excitement and the enthusiasm, it just seemed like it was nothing but all my energy was focused on you. Now, we wanted our love to start out right. So what we did, I found this book that had 31 versions of the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. I wanted us to be able to have something very special in that very first wedding day when we were heading off for our honeymoon. Do you remember what we did? Yes, that evening you brought out this book and you said, honey, I would like to start our marriage. And from this day forward, to read 1 Corinthians 13 about love. Sounded like a great start, wasn't it? It was. I was very impressed and very happy. Well, then we set off. We flew out the next morning to our special place on Hilton Head Island. I know you remember that. Yes, I do. <laughs> I asked that we, I didn't care where we went as long as we had a warm place to go because I like heat and sunshine. And now we were starting our wonderful new lives together. Well, do you remember what happened the first time we went out to play tennis? Yes, we had never played tennis in our courtship or engagement, and it was interesting. I always thought I was a good tennis player, and I told you, oh, yes, I really love to play <laughs> tennis. So we got out on the court, and we began to play tennis. And it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I think uh, you were used to the guys that you were with before hitting the ball to you, and I was a bit too competitive, wasn't I? Well, it seemed that way. Um, I just felt like I was spending a lot of time running back and forth from one side of the court to the other. And it seemed like if I hit the ball, it often wouldn't even go in the court. So, you know, it did, uh, I, I thought maybe I was just having an off day or something. But as we 
tried it a couple of more times, I soon realized that uh, I am really not a good tennis player, and this really isn't enjoyable. It was just a lot of extra hard work for me. Well, we decided tennis wasn't for us, at least not now. So we moved from tennis into canoeing. Which was another new experience that we had not done together before this. And uh, we just really encourage you, if you are engaged at this point or you have a special relationship with someone, do some of these things together so you really know how you each really are. But my husband didn't know that I had uh, a fear of water. And so we got in the canoe, and the first thing I wanted to do was put this life jacket on. You remember that? I just wanted to make sure, and you, you probably thought, what is she doing putting a life jacket on I the canoe? I usually had it in the canoe, but I wasn't used to just putting it on, especially when it was warm. Yes, well, I tightened all mine up, and I was ready to go, but it seemed like every time you, you turn one side or the other, the canoe started tipping, and I, and I would hold on to the end, the edges, and I was quite fearful. Well, we don't want to paint such a negative picture, because we did have a great honeymoon. We did. But really, where we had a great time was bicycling. Now, I have to tell you, this is quite humorous, but they would not rent us a car. Now, here we are, nearly 24 years old, and we can't rent a car on our honeymoon because we're too young. You had to be 25 to rent a car, so we rented bicycles. And we had a great time riding bicycles. Yes, I was pretty good at riding a bicycle. <laughs> I had a little work to keep up with you, but it was enjoyable, and we had a good time. Just being together, that's what, w that's what I was looking forward to, just having every moment with you because I loved you so much. And I just knew, no matter how you know, uncoordinated I might have been in some of these things, life was just going to be happy ever after. And then we went back to the real life. You know, that's one of the things after the honeymoon, you go back to real life. And we were both working at the hospital, and... We both had rather stressful jobs at times, and what began to happen then, dear? Well, it seemed that as we would get up in the morning and travel to the hospital together, it seemed that you were very quiet in the morning, and um, I wasn't used to you being quiet. I was used to you talking to me and feeling free that I could share with you, and so I can remember after a little while, I'd start saying things like, how come you don't talk to me in the morning? And, you know, I really hadn't had that experience because we weren't talking early in the morning, and so you didn't know that I wasn't really a morning person. And so I used as my excuse, well, I'm just not very talkative early in the morning. That's right. That's what you told me. I'm not a morning person. So you told me, go ahead and talk. And so I would. I'm a, I can talk any time of the day. <laughs> you know that. So I would talk to work, going to work, and then... I noticed coming home you weren't very talkative, and I said, how come you don't talk to me? And this is after work. You've been awake all day. You've worked hard. I'm interested to know what your day was like and who you talked to and what you did in your, your job, and it seemed that you were very quiet. And yet, when we were recording, you would call me all the time and tell me all about your day. And you know, folks, what I was experiencing, and I didn't realize all this at the time, but I was feeling pressure now. Because now I was in the, the real life. I was in the stressful situations. And now here's my wife putting pressure on me that I'm not communicating right. And so she started feeling this pressure. And I started feeling the pressure. And little walls started going up between us. And I started thinking, you really don't seem like the same person that I married either. You know, you were this bubbly, vivacious woman you know, you were very confident and organized and on top of things. And now I start noticing that you're withdrawing. And I'm thinking, well, is this just because, you know, I mean, what is she really like? Did I really not get to know her? And so the walls started coming up between us. And I think at that time we didn't even recognize those walls That's were right. being built. I think that we both were... In, in a new phase that we had never experienced before. And when I married you, I just expected that you were just going to make me a part of every right. aspect of your life. And that's what I was wanting you to become in my life. And so I was pressuring you, questioning you. I want you to do this for me. And that was making you pull back. And yet I was trying to include myself into your life in all these other areas. And that wasn't what you were expecting, and so you were kind of, 
you know, a little bit shy of that. You know, you like to be with your buddies and you like to be with your friends at work. And then when you come home, then you could be with your wife. And so I think that what happened is we didn't recognize that these little things were starting to uh, build in our marriage. And I found myself at times feeling frustrated and hurt. And I think every, every woman out there knows what I'm talking about. We mm. can easily be hurt. And I found myself responding to you in ways that I wasn't accustomed that I even had done before, you know, sarcastically saying sharp things to you um, because you weren't meeting my need or the, my perceived need. And I wasn't really understanding you. And I wasn't being sensitive to you, and I didn't recognize these things. And so I remember it got to the point for you that there were times I could actually walk in the kitchen, you know, s several months down the road in our, in our marriage. I could walk in the kitchen, and you would have a reaction. You remember that? Oh, yes. I mean, uh, there were times that I'd actually start seeing your handshake, and you would start fumbling. And instead of me having tenderness, and pity for you and, and, and being sympathetic, it irritated me. It's like, what is going on here? Where, where is this vivacious, wonderful woman that I married? And I found myself just <laughs> withering away and withdrawing. And, um, you know, when you would respond that way, I would feel like I wasn't doing things right. And so I would try really hard and, you know, I might cut myself or burn myself and seemed like once a week I had a new injury somewhere yes. from being in the kitchen. And um, I think also that I didn't understand the effects. Something was happening different in me that I had never experienced. The effects of the birth control that I had been put on mm. was really messing up my thoughts and my emotional stability, which having never experienced that before. Not to mention your hormones. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> But we didn't know that was a factor at the time. It, but it was a very real factor we discovered later. But it only yes. made the, these things more difficult to deal with. And, you know, as we've had the opportunity to talk with many, many couples over the years, we were entering into what I now call the fatal cycle. Mm -hmm. And we have seen scores of couples enter this fatal cycle, not even knowing that they're entering into it. And for us, the fatal cycle, for me, without even realizing it, I was living a single lifestyle and trying to fit you into it as a married man. I didn't even know it. I was just trying to fit you. Uh, I, I wanted to keep all my interests, all my friends, all my buddies, and I wanted to fit you in. And that's not how you viewed the marriage. I didn't know I viewed it that way, but that was what was beginning our fatal cycle is me trying to fit you in to my lifestyle. I was holding a single life and didn't even realize it while I was a married man. Well, sometimes when we were together in the evenings, they were many happy times, but there were also some evenings that were quite stressful. It depended upon how responsive you would be uh, to me at least coming home. And if you were more withdrawn or quiet, then I would find myself withdrawing from you and my communication with you again, would be a little sharper or more indifferent, like you can't really touch me or, mm -hmm. you know, you're not going to hurt my feelings. But it really wasn't true. It was a cover-up. Well, we're going to talk about that. We need to take a break here, but when we come back, we want to talk about where that fatal cycle led us and how God broke through to restore us. There are many how-to books available, but there's one that's free and perfect for every couple. How you can build a better marriage. Bible-based matrimonial advice is given in a light-hearted, easy-to-read manner for those contemplating marriage, newlyweds, couples in their golden years, and everyone in between. Simply call or write for your free copy of this amazing little booklet, a handy little tool to help build a better marriage. Welcome back. We're talking about how we became one. And uh, so far we haven't really given you much evidence that we're doing a very good job. <laughs> but <laughs> stay with us because I really was in love with my wife and she was in love with me. But you know, as we've talked to 
so many couples. This is not so uncommon in marriage. Many people just don't know how to deal with it. So we're going to be talking about how God takes these difficult situations and makes a marriage that's truly heart to heart. Heart to heart with God and heart to heart with one another. So here we are. We're back at this dreadful evening, dear. <laughs> I remember it very well. Probably too well. I'm thankful that as we recount this, this evening and the pain that was there, we are past that. And we got past right. it very, very soon after that evening. Because God is going to do great things in people's lives. God does want those people out there to have a marriage heart to heart. That's right. He still does miracles every day Amen. in our hearts. And that's the exciting thing about God is he's bigger than all of our problems. And he has a way to heal those hurts and fix those problems and really bring us heart to heart. And sometimes we have to go through some hard things before we really realize where our solution is. So that evening we had another one of our blow-ups. And you headed one direction and I headed the other. And I ended up down in the basement, the basement of our house. And I was sitting down there and I was feeling pretty sorry for myself. You didn't know that at the time, but I was sitting there thinking, here we go again. I was so frustrated, so upset, and I was so focused on my selfishness. And I didn't know what to do. I was questioning our marriage. I was questioning what is going on here. And I don't know what was happening with you. What was going on with you upstairs? Well, I started to go to the bedroom, but I realized I didn't want to go there because I figured when you came back up, that's where you'd find me. So I went into the office because I figured you wouldn't find me there so quickly. But I was feeling quite hurt again and feeling very discouraged. And yet in my heart, I knew you loved me and I knew I loved you. Mm. And I was confident that God had brought us together. Amen. You know, sometimes these difficulties cause us to question, but we can't really question. We have to believe that when we join as husband and wife, we are making that commitment to one another forever and before God. And that's a forever commitment. Amen. And I was really um, questioning in my own mind, you know, what's wrong with me? Am I losing it? You know, and so I turned my focus off of you and I started looking at myself, but not in a positive way, mm. in a very negative way. And so it brought me more and more discouragement. And I, I, I found myself feeling um, incapable even of making simple decisions and fearful of not, of not knowing how to react. Sorry I put you through that, dear. I forgave you a long time ago. <laughs> it was my own choice. But you know, that night as I was sitting down there in the basement, I was, I was thinking about myself and what's wrong with you? It was yeah. a me focus. And we're going to be talking about that. But, you know, I didn't understand how God really speaks to us and in that still, small voice. But that night, I'll never forget, that night as I was sitting there on the couch, this thought came so vividly. It might as well have been an audible voice. It wasn't an audible voice, but the Holy Spirit came through so forcibly. And this is the thought that came to me. If you don't stop picking on your wife, you will destroy her. Oh, it just set me back there on the couch. And suddenly, for the first time, I got my mind off myself, and I started thinking about you. And I started realizing, this is my problem. It's not just your problem. It's not what you are doing or not doing. I've got a problem. And so this is the next thought that the Lord brought to me when I started to open my heart to the Lord there on the couch. Think of 10 things that you love and appreciate about your wife. 10 things. Now today, if I had to think of 10 things about my wife that I love and appreciate, it would be a very easy thing to do. But that night, because of what we had been through, it was not an easy thing. And I sat there, and the only thing that I could think of was... I was a good cook. Great cook! 
<laughs> I know. But that had already caused great conflict in our <laughs> marriage because I, I said you're a great cook, didn't I? And, and that daily, daily. That was my great compliment. I said to you one day, honey, I want to be more than a cook to you. <laughs> <laughs> and so here I was trying to think of 10 things. It's all the Lord's asking me to do. Think of 10 things that I love and appreciate about my wife, and I couldn't. And I cried out to the Lord. I said, oh, God, help me. I saw my need. I saw the direction that I was going and where it was taking us. We were in a fatal cycle. And I cried out to the Lord, and the Lord began to open my heart. And the thoughts began to flow. And I started getting excited. And I started writing <laughs> things down. And I got so excited, I wanted to come upstairs and find you and tell you what great things God was doing in me. And then the Lord restrained me. The restraint was, no, no. You need to demonstrate this love and appreciation. Don't speak about it. Don't tell her all these things that you love and appreciate about her. Demonstrate that love to her. And you remember, I came up. And you did find me. And I found you. And when I found you, and I saw you sitting in the corner of our office, on the floor, huddled, brokenhearted, weeping, God broke through to my heart. You remember that moment? Oh, I do. I heard you coming up the stairs, and I kind of snuggled into my corner because I was embarrassed for where I was, and I, I knew that I wasn't coping the way I should be. And as you came up and you stood in the door, after you'd looked for me in the bedrooms, you stood in the door and you saw me there. Hmm. I sensed that moment of, of hesitation and contemplation and then you spoke so gently and so, so tenderly. I, I mean, it's just as if you just spoke those words to me, honey, mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the way I've treated you. The first thing that you told me is that you were sorry. And then you said, honey, I love you. And then you started coming into the room and you, you knelt down by me there on the floor. And of course, I was embarrassed for being there, but I was so embarrassed I didn't really want to look up. And then you shared with me what was in, really in your heart. And as you shared it with me, I mean, I found my heart just opening up like a flower to the sunshine. And I found myself reliving the emotion in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very meaningful and very mm. tender, wasn't it? <clears throat> yeah. It, it, was, it was a turning point in our relationship. Amen. And as you spoke those words and you s told me, you said, God has put it in my heart to show appreciation towards you. And I'm going to demonstrate these things. I have written 10 things. You told me how you wrote them on the paper and that you weren't going to let me read your list. <laughs> and I really wanted to read it because I wanted to know what was on that list. But you weren't going to let me read it. You said, I'm going to demonstrate these two. I'm going to show mm. you. And then you, you tell me how I'm doing. You figure out that list by how I live and how I treat you <coughs> and how... I respond to you. And then, I'm still not looking at you except, you know, under my <coughs> arm there. And then you said to me, and I want you to know that being a good cook is not one of them. <laughs> and with that, I tell you, my head popped up and a laugh came just right out. You remember that? I just burst out laughing. You know, all that pent up emotion. Because we really did love each other, but we mm. had so long or in our own ways quietly, subtly built these walls that were, keep, that were barricading us from each other. And as you spoke those words and the laughter came, you took me by the hand and, and you said, I you looked me right in the eye and you said, I really do love you. Mm -hmm. And it was so meaningful. It was like the past was done, we're in a new life, and we're going to move forward from this point on. And you knew at that moment that I really did love you. I did, and I was convinced. The I knew it before, too. <laughs> the beauty of that situation was that you already knew I loved you, but now you were experiencing that That's love. Right. And I remember embracing you there in that moment. That was a very special moment. You know, Ephesians 4.32 says, Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, 
forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. You know, one of the things that I remember most about that evening was your forgiveness. That true forgiveness that only comes from God. And it's beautiful. And it's the only place that it can come from because we cannot generate that forgiveness in and of ourselves. That's right. Not only did I forgive you that night, honey, but you also forgave me for my selfishness and my self-focus and my stubbornness. <laughs> and it's never been the same since. We had a new start, and it's only gotten better. Amen. Now I never saw the original list, <laughs> but I knew what they were. But I have a new list you gave me a few years ago. It has 54 things on it that you love and appreciate about me. And the exciting thing is, is that I know them because that's how you treat me. That's how you live towards me every day. Well, it's wonderful because I could, I could write a new list probably every day because love continues to grow. Okay. And we do have a marriage that's heart to heart. And we want this for you, our listening and viewing audience, to have that kind of marriage. It only comes through Christ. And if you find yourself in a stressful, difficult situation in your marriage, God can give you the answers. Be willing to go to God, cry out like we did, and God will be there for you. In fact, I think it would be great right now if we prayed together. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the opportunity to come to you in every situation. You're the creator of life and of marriage. And we know in coming into oneness with you, it's only then that we come into oneness to become one with each other and have a marriage that's heart to heart. Bless us to that end. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, we're going to be talking about something that everybody experiences, and that is the, the two me's or the one us. What do you like better, the, the me focus or the us focus? I'd rather have one us than two me's. That's right. <laughs> and so we need to move from the me focus to the us focus because we're just focused on ourselves when we're in the me focus. It's a very selfish focus. So that's what we're going to be talking about when we get together next time. Two me's or one us for marriage heart to heart.